let me welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the last study on the book of the three chapter Old Testament minor prophet Zebaniah. Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we attribute to you honor, glory, majesty, dominion, and praise. We exalt your name and ask for the favor of clear teaching, clear understanding, fruitful discussion, and through us, expansion of the kingdom here on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Welcome. This last 13 verses of chapter 3 is a focus of study, and I'll just quickly read to refresh some of us who are not read it recently. Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, for the day when I arise as a witness. For my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour upon them my indignation, all the heat of my anger. For in the fire of my jealous wrath, all the earth shall be consumed. Yea, at that time, I will change the speech of the people to a pure speech, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my people of the dispersed ones shall be my offering. On that day, you shall not be put to shame because of the deeds which you have rebelled against me. For then I will remove from your midst your proudly exultant ones, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. For I will live in the midst of you, a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord. Those who are left in Israel, they shall do no wrong and utter no lies, nor shall they be found in their mouth a deceitful tongue. For with your pasture, and none of them shall be made afraid. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cast out your enemies. The king of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall fear evil no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Let not your house, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. And that you are in his love, he will exalt over you with loud singing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, let me just complement it with the three verses. As on a day of festival, I will remove disaster from you so that you will no longer bear reproach. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors and I will save the lame and gather the outcasts I will change their shame into praise and renew in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you together. Yea, I will make you renowned and praised among the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Second time, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are at the beginning, it has been anger, decrying, indignation, pandemic, judgment of the whole world starting from Israel. And now it's as if fences have been mended and promises have been made for good. And we're talking about the day of God's witness. What is the witness? What are the issues involved? You see, a witness is a person who tells what he saw, who was present when something happened, especially one who is able to give account of what took place. That's a witness. We are talking about God's day of witness. God position in creation is much more than a witness, you know. It's much more than a witness of a passersby or an onlooker. He is omnipresent. Even when he was asking Adam, where are you? He was witness to what Adam did. So as omnipresent God, he has accurate records of all events. He told 
the Jewish priests in Malachi 2.14, I'm witness to you and the faithlessness between you and your wife of your youth. So he's omnipresent. But secondly, as the most effective administrator, he had kept his peace since he delegated authority in creation to man at inception. Let's refresh our mind, our, our memory of Genesis 1.26, as I put it on the screen. God said, let us make mankind in our own image, in our own likeness, so that we will rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the life score, stock, and all wild animals, and over all creatures that include human beings that move around the ground. So you find that that is heavy responsibility. To whom much is given, much is expected. So the consequences of authority, they also include accountability. And this emphasis on this study would double us as accountability as well as vindication of his elect's prey. You know, in some other translation, it's not that I am witness, the Lord is witness. He says he's talking to about he's, to, he's assuring the prey, the hunted. Much as his witness is also in favor of those who have been hunted. The day of judgment will feature no solicitor before the just God. That is the situation, no, no lawyer, I'm sorry, no medics, no lawyer. So the judge of judgment will feature as a day of witness for the day when I rise up as a witness. I told you, God has shown me that a couple of times. It's not just you will say you did it, you have a replay of your video. The actual incident will be live audiovisual. So day of judgment is a day of God's witness. It's also the day of God's decision. It says, my decision is. So he's not talking about what might happen. He had made up my mind. We think my mind is made up. God is saying my decision is. So the day of judgment is a day of execution of God's decision. Thirdly, this day of judgment is a day of general assembly. It may not just be, even if it's one-on-one, -on -one, everybody will see it. To assemble kingdoms. It's a day of general assembly. Everybody will see what happened to you, what happened to them. Number four, that day of judgment is a day of indignation. Amos said, don't seek that day. It's not a day of entertainment. It's a day of indignation. It's a day when you will assemble kingdom to pour on them my indignation. It's a day of indignation, sorry. Number five, the day of judgment is the day of heated anger. All my burning anger, not a little left, is a day of heated anger. Sixthly, the day of judgment is a day of God's jealous wrath. God's jealous wrath, my indignation is jealous, is he, he, he stimulated to anger by what people have done. Seventh, the day of judgment is a day that excludes none, all kingdoms. So there is no sacred cow that will have exemption for the gates, for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the gates to enter or to be rejected. It excludes none. I haven't been done with categories of subsection of all involved. The purifying day is for multi-purpose dimensions because it's a stepping stone to united purity for the righteous. It's a day, he said, for then. I will turn to the people, I will turn to the people a pure language that they may call, all call upon the middle of the Lord. It's a day of united purity. Those who have made it united purity. Besides, it's aimed at communion and service unto the Lord. All 
that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one concept, united communion. We are now focusing, we are zeroing on those who, who made it. It's a day of joyful reunion for the exiled. You know, Christians today, they are the hunted, hunted species. They hunt us all over the place, sometimes with guns, sometimes with ridicules, sometimes with ignominy, sometimes with, you are even put aside as if you don't exist. It's a day of joyful reunion for the exiles. From beyond the rivers, it appear my supplant, even the daughter of my dispatch. People have been flushed out. Zeroing on the, on, on, on the leg is a day of freedom from shame, from shameful pasts. In that day, you will feel no shame. Still zeroing on the, on the ones who make it, it's a day of sorting unto purity. I said it once. For then I will remove from your miss, your proud, exalted ones, and you never have your heart on my own. It's a day of sorting out together the wits according to the words of Jesus Christ. Not just that one, there's a sixth point about the elect. It's a day of quiet sheltering of the humble. Most of, most of the time, when you want to depict the humble, I don't know why they depict them with women and children. I've seen this. Those who are left will be the lowly and humble to shelter the humble, the lowly. That is the kingdom of heaven, Jesus Christ has said. It's not without the seventh point for the people who made it. It's a day of delightful perfection of Israel's remnant. Delightful perfection. You can see seven people carrying just one banner, honesty. Delightful perfection of the Israel, either biological or spiritual. The remnant of Israel shall do no iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. You know, all liars will have been in a lake of fire. Every, the, the opposite of any form of lying, they will not speak lies. They will not act lies. Lies will not be found in their mouth. It's a, it's a day of mutual honesty. You say the way it is, when you have to realize the truth, something is wrong with your nature. You say out this truth in a spontaneous way, you don't react how to put it. There's still an eighth point about this elect. It's a day of confident rest for the elects. That's verse 13. They will lie down with nothing to make them afraid. In these days, if you have a noise in the night, you are startled. You cannot even imagine what it would be. It's a confident rest for the children of the elect. Now let's see another analytical thought zoom. You see, the prophetic past assurance for God's elect is that of rejoicing for exclusion from condemnation. You celebrate freedom. That's verse 14. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your hearts, O daughter of Jerusalem. Wonderful figure of speech. Put in Andel has been perfected in the way he has put it there. I can see that ballet dancer giving it a, a very appropriate connotation, exclusion from condemnation. You know, when, when, when you don't even know how they will get at you, your, your, your head is bowed, but right now the, the head is raised in jubilation. So this prophetic past, he said it as if it has happened. And he said the Lord has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy. Like Abraham was telling the rich man, there will be permanent separation between hell and heaven. They're in opposite directions. He has cast out your enemy, the king of Israel, even the Lord is in the middle of you. If you remember, no earth, no heaven, no temple there, the Lord is in the midst of his people. He will be in the midst of his people. The judgment hammer has been broken, as you can see here. He's rejoicing for exclusion from condemnation. If God does not condemn you, who will condemn you? Like Romans 8, the first two verses, there is therefore now no more condemnation for those who belong to Christ. No more condemnation. That, con that hammer, I don't know what they call it in the court, 
it will be broken. And because you belong to him, the power of life saving spirit has freed you from the power of sin. If you go to the court for judgment, you never can tell what will happen. Now, this is no longer your portion. Being excluded from condemnation, and in Romans chapter 8 continues, for God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh. The flesh and the law, they are not, you know, they are not friends, you know, because nobody is going to prison. God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son the likeness of sinful flesh to take up our condemnation. So you've been exchanged from the hanging gallows. This rejoicing continues Romans that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. You can see the, I don't know whether to call it many, many, whatever he is wearing. Those who live according to the flesh, they have their minds set on what the flesh desires. By the time you see their appearance, nobody needs to ask you what is being advertised. Those who live in accordance with the spirit, their mind, you know, rejoicing from exclusion or condemnation is, is an expression of your, what your mind is. The mindset on the flesh is death, not just venereal disease, it's death, physical, spiritual. But the mindset on the spirit, is life and peace. So this life in the prophetic past is talking about the end time for the children of spiritual Israel. It's a time of vindication. The king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. Once the judge, your friend, is in your midst, you don't need any attention to not, not to nurse. You will fear disaster no more. Double negatives of American language. You will fear disaster no more. And assuring you, and he says, the Lord is in your midst. And verse 15 says, you shall see disaster no more. It's a positive assurance. So don't even think that you are going to fall headlong. Disaster is on your, not your portion again. <clears throat> it is strengthening. Announcements. In that day, it shall be to Jerusalem, fear not. And to Zion, let your hand, let not your hand be slack. Victories over battles, the Lord God is, is living among you, is a mighty savior. When you watch this very, very well, the analysis of God's favorable presence. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you can see deep darkness right and left. Psalm 23, verse 4. I will fear no evil. You will hear the you will hear the lion, you will hear the you will hear the hyena, you hear somebody because you are with me. I'm put in the language of Romans chapter 8, verse 31. You can see this mighty shoe on your left spot on the face on the screen facing you. That shoe is bigger than the man. The man did not even bother about looking at the side of the shoe. He just put his finger, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is with me, you can be an elephant. I, I, don't, need to, I don't need to think twice. Nobody can guess me. And like some people will say in the in traditional way, stop there. Agbero, if God is with us, who can be against us? Those are the valuables of the elect of God, of the elect nation, spiritual and biological, that are the consequences of God taking away our punishment. And besides, there is God's expressed happiness over his own. Sometimes God, God sometimes God comforts you by rejoicing over you and saying it loud. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. It will take great delight in you. It will quiet you with its law. It will rejoice over you with singing. It cannot be any better. And this law will be renewed, verse 17b. The Lord will quiet you with his law. You can see the way you cuddle a child and give, give him or her 
all the visual guarantees, all the in the language you understand best, you just smile with confidence. And it's not without actual celebration. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. It's not a quiet, it's not a quiet retreat, loud singing. These are times for everything. Protection from the future. I will gather those who grieve about the appointed feasts. Blessed are those who mourn. They came from you, o Zion. The reproach of exile is a burden on them. Those who are mourning, those who are praying, those who are making tears, they are, they, they, they water to water their eyes, God will wipe away all tears. And he has categorically said in verse 19, thus says the Lord. Now I will deal with all your oppressors. I will save you and change your shame to praise. So it's a time to deal with your oppressors. While you are rejoicing in heaven, unfortunately, it is wriggling with pain forever in hell for the former. And these are the people who, when the Bible will save you, in as much as you have done it to any one of these, saving the slow, saving the lame, verse 19, behold, at that time, I will, deal, I will deal with all your oppressors and I will save the lame and gather the outcasts. And I will change their shame into praise and renown into all the earth. So those who are beggars today, who are godly, because there are some beggars who are terrible, who are godly, they have a future hope with God. Today, they are on the steps of public buildings. He will gather the outcasts, like you have seen it there. I will gather and gather her that was driven out. Those who have been treated as if they, 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 they made a mistake to exist in this mortal world, I will gather them. And there will be an exchange of shame for praise. I will turn their shame into praise. The way these evangelists are saying, a garment of shame, I will remove it. God said, it will, it will be done with the garment of shame. Your hand praises, your hand erases my shame. These are promises for his elects. And it will enhance international popularity. You'll be renowned in all the earth. So when you are talking about reputation, when you are talking about prestige, prestige when you are talking about the international, Russia is arising, Ukraine is being careful about getting Israel involved. Everybody respects Israel. So even now and in future, the Lord is systematically gathering and distinguishing his own. And there will be restoration of their nation with dignity. Zephaniah 3.20, at that time, I will restore your fortunes before your eyes, before your eyes. I will give you renown and praise among all the peoples of the earth. He has done it, he is doing it, he will do it. So let's come back home before we start discussing. Today, the above prophecy on Israel has become a testimony, you know, it's since 1948. Because God will not swallow his word, Isaiah 55, 11. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. But it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Today, the prophecy is systematically becoming positive, partly. Let's see what we are in Christ. To stop talking about the biological Israel, in Christ, we are as much as a chosen generation. That's what First Peter 2 and 10 say, you are a chosen generation. A very good song I like to sing. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people to show for the praises of him 
who are a chosen generation. It doesn't stop there. It qualifies the Christian nation. Once you are not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. When end times, you know, it's so loud with all the, with all creation, must lie, landslide, rumors, wars, rumors of war, war, roaring of the ocean, flood, fire, everything is happening as if this is the week of end time crisis. And Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 18, when the Son of Man comes, you can see those angels around him. Will he find faith on the earth? Because Jesus Christ said, when all these things start to happen, look up. Many of us are looking down. Will he find faith? Will you look beyond the muddy, the muddy, cloudy disaster and still raise up your head as if, they, as if God exists? And he says, be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps burning. That's Luke 12, 35. Let your light, let, let your light shine on. Keep your lamp burning. He says in verse 36, are you yourself like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Are we ready to open unto him? Are we, you know, I love this, this uh, left poetry. Be prepared. It's not just for scouts. Are you ready to open to him promptly? He said, blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, find what you, because we are now in the time of falling away. A lot of Christians are falling away. A lot of great men are falling away. A lot of great ladies are falling away. You wonder, was this person a Christian? This end time is preparatory to God's witness against the earth. Like it's put in second Ezra, when God is going to judge you out, he will remove mercy, he will remove any sentiments. You don't want to be shown that day and, uh, and not tremble. No mercy. I wonder, he said, blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, find watching. Be prepared. He may come in the middle of the night or just before dawn. But whenever he comes, he will reward the servants who are ready. How prepared am I? How prepared are you? He said, but be sure of this. You can see Christ knocking at the door. And some people are still busy with domestic quarrel behind the door. Be sure of this. That if the head of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. You too be ready. For you do not know when he's coming at an hour, and he will come at an hour you do not expect. This end time is preparatory to God's witness against the earth. You can see the Lord knocking. So many things are happening behind the door. And God's witness against the earth is not the best witness you want to know. And finally, how ready are you? How ready am I as the elect of God's rest? I will. Just read the memory verse before I hand over to our coordinator. And Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9 says, Yea, at that time, I will change the speech of the people to a pure speech, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. May I make it, may you make it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>